Hello, and welcome to another episode of Five Things, a web series dedicated to answering the five burning tech questions you have about technologies and workflows in the media creation space, plus tech stuff I dig and how it's used. I'm your host, Michael Kamis, and today we're delving into the hopefully permanent realm of archive. Ah, yes, archive, the thing we rarely think about. Archive is a lot like that high school yearbook you've got tucked away. You only look at it when someone from your past crawls out of the woodwork, and many times those memories have faded. The good part is that when you need it, Archive is there, and that's exactly what you want from an Archive system. Archiving, for the media realm, is based on reliability. It's the bank safe and final resting place of your media, so nothing bad can ever, ever happen to it. It's not, I repeat, it's not on your SAN, or your NAS, or that locally attached storage. All of those are volatile and have fairly limited shelf lives. In fact, studies have shown that after four years, 20% of hard drives out in the wild are doorstop fodder, so we need to come up with an alternative solution. Enter Archive. When we look at various storage theories that involve archive, we come across the concept of tiered storage. Tiered storage speaks to the relative importance of your media combined with how fast you can access it. While the lines in the sand of storage waver, depending on your industry, we can draw some basic guidelines for people working with video-based media. Let's discuss the various tiers of storage and how archive relates to the rest of your storage. Tier one is your fast storage. This is your storage that must deliver the most throughput and speed. This is where availability is paramount over capacity. For VFX people, this may be flash storage. For video people, this is usually your DAS or direct attached storage. Or it could be on your SAN. Some companies will try to push NAS solutions for tier one video solutions, which I believe to be a way to get cheaper solutions to unsuspecting folks. But that's my cross to bear. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Next, we move to Tier 2. Tier 2 is where you need capacity over availability. This is normally a holding pen for rarely used media, or after products are done, but you still have a decent chance of using the projects and media in the immediate future. Often, film and television projects use Tier 2 for high-res masters, while they edit with low-res proxies off of Tier 1. They then relink to the high-res on Tier 2 for output. This is where NAS solutions usually fit in. I'm also beginning to see people using LTO for Tier 2, especially in reality television. Capacity is paramount in these scenarios when there isn't daily usage. Archive is commonly referred to as Tier 3 in most scenarios. In enterprise-level deployments, Archive can be Tier 4 or even Tier 5. In either case, it's the last stop for your media. This is where reliability is valued over availability or capacity. Often. Archive takes the form of LTO, cloud storage, or even optical storage. These formats need to have massive amounts of redundancy and be less sensitive to the effects of father time. As you will most likely never access most of this content again, you need it somewhere where you don't have to worry about it. As mentioned, Archive usually takes the form of LTO, cloud, or optical storage. Cloud is a fancy schmancy way of saying someone else deals with it. This usually means a third party with a data center with many machines and a whole lot of storage. So many of both, in fact, that if any machine or storage pool goes down, they have redundant systems to safeguard against data loss. Often, they call this the five nines. That is 99.999% uptime. This could be as simple as FTPing your media to a third-party web host, or as involved as a managed archival platform running on Amazon S3 or another managed cloud provider. Normally, the cost for storing the data is cheap, but it's the retrieval of that same data that's the expensive part. Also, the paltry bandwidth you may have at your facility will greatly reduce the availability of your media. In many cases, that's not a huge deal. After all, this is archival where the immediate availability is the lowest priority, but it is something to provision for if you're looking at consolidating the tiered storage methodology. You made him sell you his soul? Not yet, but I will. It's the classic first taste is free gambit. Next, we have LTO tape. 
If you're unfamiliar, check out our last episode on LTO. Tons of great info. In a nutshell, each LTO7 tape can hold up to 6 terabytes, and over twice that if the data is compressed. With read times from the tape approaching 300 megabytes a second and a shelf life of up to 30 years, LTO is a fantastic option. Single LTO7 readers are under $5,000, and autoloaders, multi-slot libraries, and robots are great workhorses if you're serious about having an archive strategy. Lastly, we have Optical. This is a way of using older Blu-ray disc technology to store data. It's kind of like that old CD changer you had in your car. It's a magazine of Blu-ray discs that data can be housed on. Sony, one of the leaders in optical technology, have ODA, Optical Disc Archive. Gen 1 of ODA is shipping with 1.6 terabyte cartridges and read speeds approaching 140 megs a second with write speeds about half that. Gen 2 of ODA, which is due to be released later this year, is approaching double of every Gen 1 spec at about the same price. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> the bonus is that optical solutions are random access, which means you can instantly start pulling the media back once the cartridge is loaded. This is vastly different than LTO tape, where the drive needs to fast forward and rewind to find the data on the tape before it's retrieved. Lastly, as Sony claims, ODA discs can last upwards of 50 years and can actually function after being submerged in salt water for several weeks. You may think that Archive is a set it and forget it scenario. Copy it off and move on. But oh no, there are things you need to do to ensure that just because you've got it, you can actually find it, if you ever need to. Time is not kind to our memories. Out of sight, out of mind. Thus, having a way to catalog the media so you can find where you put it is paramount. This can take the form of an archive format agnostic asset management solution or software specific to the medium you plan to back up to. I'm a big fan of an agnostic asset management system. Not only can it track and reconcile data on any of your tiers of storage, but it can also the automate the writing and retrieval of your archive material. Also, most asset management systems have industry standard databases, so you still have a record of the archival data, even years down the road, if any of your tech partners goes out of business. It's what we call a global killer, the end of mankind. Doesn't matter where it hits, nothing would survive, not even bacteria. Next, if you're not using the cloud, where is your media physically being kept? Is it on a shelf next to your tier two, or is it housed off site? Here in California, we never know when the next big one will hit, so many people will ship LTO backups out of state. Flooding in fires also don't tend to play well with archive material. This is where safes become an option, or again, contemplate moving your stuff off site. Now this can get expensive. This is where you may want to consider charging clients for archival. Offset your cost by making it a service. You can offer backing up not just the final cut and elements, but perhaps all of the originals as well. Buying your own archive storage is priced differently than a cloud archive model, which is more a rental model or per month cost. So I've averaged prices out over four years. What this doesn't take into consideration are the costs for the infrastructure to use these storage mediums. LTO drives can be under $5,000 while the tapes are still under 200 bucks. Optical systems are newer and start around $6,500. And while the initial outlay of thousands of dollars may seem steep, consider the cost of data retrieval from a cloud archive on top of the reoccurring monthly cost, which will only rise as you archive more and more data. Have more archive concerns other than just these five questions? Ask me in the comments section. Also, please subscribe and share this tech goodness with the rest of your techie friends. Archive is a great party starter. Until the next episode, learn more, do more. Thanks for watching.